Welcome to the Catalyst Development video tutorial series. This is video one, getting started with SocketWrench. In this video, I will explain how to add SocketWrench.net to your project and create a simple application which retrieves an HTML document from a web server. This tutorial requires that you have Visual Studio 2005 and SocketWrench.net 5.0 installed on your development system. The first step is to create a new project in Visual Studio by selecting the File, New, Project menu option. For this example, I'll select the Visual Basic Windows application. Using the form designer, I'll create a very simple form that will have a multi-line text box control and a button. First add the text box control to the form, and then add the button control. Next, we need to add a reference to the SocketWrench.net component to our project. To do this, select the Project Add Reference menu option. A dialog will be displayed which will show the available .NET components. Scroll down and select the SocketTools.SocketWrench component from the list and click OK. Now that SocketWrench has been added to our project, let's switch to a code view for this form and begin creating our application. The first thing I'll do is create a private instance of the SocketWrench component, which I'll name as Socket1. The next step is to initialize this instance of the component. To do this, we'll create an event handler for the form's load event. In this event handler, we'll call the initialize method. This method is responsible for initializing SocketWrench, dynamically loading the networking modules that we'll need to communicate with the server over the internet. If there is a problem, the initialize method will return a value of false. If that happens, I'll display an error message to the user and terminate the program. The initialize method should be matched by a call to the uninitialize method. We'll create an event handler for the form closed event and call the uninitialize method there. This will ensure that the resources allocated by SocketWrench will be released when the form is destroyed. Now we'll create an event handler for the button controls click event. Let's declare the variables that we're going to use. The first step in communicating with a server is to establish a connection to it. This is done by calling the connect method. The two arguments to the connect method provide the address of the system that we're going to connect to. In this case, it is our web server. If the connect method returns true, the next step is to send the command to the server requesting the HTML document. We use the write line method to send this command to the server. After the command has been sent, the next step is to create a loop which calls the read line method, which will read the data returned by the server in response to our command. The read line method reads a line of text from the server and returns it in a string variable that I've provided. This is similar to how you would read a line of text from a text file. For each line of text that is read, I'll add that to our multi-line text box control. If the read line method returns false, then that means there's no more data to read. In that case, we'll exit the loop. The last step is to disconnect from the server, terminating our connection. To do this, I'll call the disconnect method. If the connect method fails, it will return false. In that case, we'll display an error message to the user. The last error string property will provide a description of the last error that occurred. There is also a corresponding last error property, which provides a numerical error code, which you can check in your applications. Now that we're done, let's run our program. Click on the button to connect to the server and view the HTML document. That's all there is to it.
This concludes the video tutorial. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, please visit our website at www.catalyst.com.